Nope, I'm... Um, oh, the... That stream... Bound. Yeah, I got it. Bound together with the oddest magical <laughs> there we go. John Drew. This wretched book is where it all began so long ago. Okay. Before time. Steam... Oh, I have to put my Steam username in and stuff. I am Dr. Edward... Oh, Lewis. yeah, if you're not logged in, Steam will make you. Psychologist. I am logged in the Steam, it's really weird. Oh. Mm. Did you announce a GT on the Steam group? I'm about to know. It is the story can I invite someone to chat? I can. Like Dennis, do you mind if I add you to Steam and then invite you to the chat? No, please do. Okay. Will not change reality, but simply color it. Humanity has been on All right, I send you a friend request. For two millennia. Okay, Ignorance invited. So All right, accepted, I should say. All right. The guardians nice, I sent you an invite to the chat. Their time once again here. And I'll send you one as well, Whether Project. By fate or misfortune. My family has crossed their path. All right. and there we go. This is where a lot of uh, people were chatting at when I was talking to them earlier. To yeah, there's way more people talking in the, the, the chat room there than Twitch. And the last hope. There's people in uh, Twitch also. I also bought the thread of the Okay, so to every time I go to click in the other chat, it says I have to sign in or something, so I'm going to stick with Steam if that's okay. That's, that's fine. fine. Okay. I actually prefer it that way. I thought your man was asking for your sign in for Steam. Oh, he you means the Twitch chat. Twitch. Uh, that uh, JC can get questions from. Is yeah, that I'm watching him too, so GP's JC and I will okay. take care of that. Alright. All right. Okay, so this part, by the way, this this whole introduction um, was actually one of the new things uh, we put in right at the end of the game because we wanted to make sure people were cool with combat. Mm -hmm. So you get a chance to just see what it's like really fast and under pressure um, in a nightmare where you have a shotgun and you're fighting zombies. Very nice. Hello. Miss Alexandra Roybus. Um, yeah, who's this? And I'm not sure um, if you remember, but this part of the story starts what I would consider a content sanity effect, where uh, the ghost of Edward keeps coming back and talking to Alex, and it gets creepy <laughs> after a while, and you realize that you realize uh, about three quarters of the way through the story. This is a big spoiler. That it's actually pious, ah, trying to, um, I'm to meet you. Um, Trust you affect her in negative ways. Um, yes, I suppose so. so that's him affecting her through each time, like in between chapters when she sees her like dead uh, grandfather show yeah. up, and he's like having little conversations with her, and then she wakes up from her dream on the well, actually. Go on. Yeah, yeah, that's right. It's, well, sometimes it's. She doesn't, not necessarily sleeping, in this case she was sleeping, but um, in the storyline, um, she, uh, she'll she actually be reading uh, the book, and then she'll pop out at, to see her grandfather, then go back into the story. Okay. Miss Roybus, is that your grandfather, Edward? Yes, it's him. He's wearing our family ring. There's actually a question I had about this. It, it, it's not at this part, but when it comes up. Because it, there's always been something that's bothered me about this. this? Mm -hmm. um, when you first start playing as a Pious, Pious, I... Pious? Yeah, yep. Pious. Uh, when you first start playing as him, when he's having his conversation with his soldiers, uh, originally they're speaking in a different language, but then, like, not even halfway through the conversation, it swaps over to English? Yes. What was the actual significance of that, or why did that um, happen? Well, what we did, uh, what we tried to do, is start the cinemas in the native tongue mm -hmm. at the time period of wherever the location was, and that was Latin. Okay. So so they're speaking Latin, and then we just sort of do a, uh, a transposition into English, and um, they did that in a movie called, it's an old movie now, well, this is an old game now, but in a movie called The, Red of, the Hunt for Red October, okay. where they're speaking Russian and they changed to English. 
And uh, so back then, I would say it was um, uh, one of the things that was uh, starting to be done in films. Okay. So maybe uh, Hunt for Red October gave you a little bit of inspiration for that? or well, That was one of the places we saw it. We saw it in a few other places. That was just the first movie that came to mind. But yeah, for sure. Um, when you're making games, you always absorb as much content as you can. I generally uh, read a ton of books go to see at least right. one movie per weekend and uh, do a lot of just taking as much uh, popular culture as I can at all times. And so does everyone, that precursor. Keeps okay. the creative juices flowing, I assume. Oh, yeah. Yep. you got to keep on looking for inspiration, otherwise you stagnate. Yep, that's for sure. You can find inspiration in a lot of things, too. So. True, true. One of the neat things about this as you're running around, a lot of people don't know this, um, the GameCube is very, very optimized for games, and um, the fade to black, we actually had to put in a time delay because it would come up so fast it would be unnatural. The rooms are all pre-cached, and there's you never see a load time in this game, really. And so that black, when you fade to black and come back out, we actually delayed it because it was too fast. Hmm. Otherwise, it would be too jarring an experience, and it would take away from the whole creepy atmosphere, right? Yeah, it, it, it was jarring. We actually put it, we put it in there to make sure that people knew that they had gotten to a new part. And... That's pretty cool. You know what's funny about stuff like that is that there's still always going to be some guy out there who's going to be complaining about load times between rooms for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. go out of your way to make it a smooth experience. Yeah, it's, it's um, you know, you, you always try to do the best stuff you can, but in, in the end, um, you know, I, I look at uh, Eternal Darkness, a lot of things uh, that I would love to have fixed up. It's just, you know, you never release something when it's, uh, it's never finished, it's just shipped. <laughs> were, were there any ideas for Eternal Darkness that didn't make the cut that you uh, really, really liked and wanted in there? Um... Hmm. There, there's always things that you wanted to do. Um, we, um, we wanted to spend more time on the magic system and balancing that more. Um, I think, uh, I don't, I don't think there was more sanity effects, a few more uh, like sort of minor uh, content things. But by and large, we got a lot of what we wanted in there. Okay. So yeah, that part I was talking about with the uh, the Red October thing that you mentioned is coming up here in just a moment, so you guys can actually see that are watching the stream what we were talking about. Um, so you said you wanted... Oh wait, okay. You said that the GameCube has like a much faster speed, so you had to do the uh, fade to black differently and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Is there any problems or things you're running into similar to that with the Wii U or uh, with the Shadow of the Eternals that you're working on now? No, not at all. Actually, the systems are so much more powerful now, um, and if you um, have a chance to look on Steam Greenlight now where you can see the project, that video there is all running in the Crytek engine, um, and it's it's actually playable. That was just a recording from, um, uh, from someone playing the demo, and it's there's just you can just do so much more now. Very nice. Are you guys so, still getting uh, feedback from me? A little bit, but we're going to make do with it. It's perfectly fine. Okay. But the fact that you just mentioned it is the first time I thought about it since the last time we mentioned it, so I have you noticing it. It's okay. As far as the need the green, the green light link, it is being put in chat. Go upvote it. It's going to be an awesome game. And yeah. Thank you. Or his orders. I know I'll be streaming it on Steam for sure. Suga's going to cover the Wii U so we can see the differences between the graphics and that. Yeah, GP's got a much more powerful computer than me, so he can take care of it on PC and make it look the way it should. We have a Facebook link here. If you guys want to share it, get the word out. Yep, I will do that. Hold on one sec. Facebook link posted. All right. Cool. 
<laughs> what's what's ref link? <laughs> Referral link. <laughs> So who would you say was your favorite character in Eternal Darkness? Um, I would say Paul Luther. I think was my favorite character. There's there's a bunch though that I I could pick. Um, certainly Maximilian. Um, but I would say Paul Luther because of um, his struggles and what he had to do to um, um, what he had to do basically to get through all that level and to face something that was just so unstoppable and he made a horrible end but uh, he was valiant all the way through. I kind of felt the same way about um, Roberto. Yeah. Yeah, I loved his ending and that was what made him become one of my favorite characters in the game just because it was so... His had like one of the darkest endings I believe because it's like being buried alive inside of that and yeah, it was kind of, it was kind of crazy. Yeah, that was based on a uh, historical fact as well. Um, uh, Tamerlane uh, would go around and uh, build pillars of flesh in cities he would conquer, so they wouldn't revolt. And so that was not a, that was not something we had made up. That actually, that kind of thing did happen in history. So it's terrible events like that that, you know. Um, make you think <laughs> what it would have been like to meet such a fate. The, uh, the events that happened in history that you uh, speak of were uh, Eternal Darkness. I noticed you guys were continuing that in Shadow of the Eternals as well, or some people were picking it up. With, yes. um, with the uh, main character that's shown in the the preview that you guys put out recently, the the demo, the nine minute one. Um, yep. What do you have to say about her? Are there any more characters that are going to be uh, tied in with actual history? And for oh, the yeah, ones well, that haven't seen it, could you uh, kind of break down what the characters what like? Sure. Um, so the character that we're featuring in the first um, first episode is Elizabeth Bathory, and for those who don't know Elizabeth Bathory, she's known as the Blood Countess. Uh, she uh, may be related to uh, Vlad the Impaler, maybe some relation, or at least rumored to be. Um, but she is one of the most notorious female serial killers. Um, she um, is uh, suspected of killing over 400 women, bathing in their blood, uh, trying to stay eternally youthful. And um, our story takes place, you play uh, a servant a maiden called Clara who's being pressured by the police to get information on Bathory and the interesting thing about the story uh, another level to the story that's interesting is she's actually Bathory's lover so um, in some sense it's a love story um, between two women um, who happen to be serial killers so um, a lot of uh, interesting domestic issues come up and uh, we think it's a story that people will generally really enjoy Sounds very different, and uh... <laughs> sounds like you've got plenty of fun stuff to yeah, do. With that I know. Story, right? <laughs> yeah, there's lots of material on uh, Elizabeth Bathory, that's for sure. Nice. Good to have a strong base. So, yeah. how how's Nintendo responding to uh, the Kickstarter so far? Uh, Nintendo's been very supportive. Uh, we've been. Uh, We've been talking to them for quite a while. Uh, they wish us luck before the Kickstarter started. Um, and, um, you know, uh, they're a great company. I've, I've known them for a super long time. And, um, you know, they're, they're really focusing on e upcoming E3 and stuff. But uh, they've been great. That's great to hear. Nintendo's always been one of my favorite companies. Sega yeah, also. And I saw that they were both going to be working together sometime soon as well. Which yep, they've partnered crazy. up. Yep. Yeah, that, the recent announcement was very exciting, so it was good. Yeah, I can't wait to see more on that Lost World Sonic game. Um, let's see, where is that? I'm trying to find. I'm 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 gonna bump the thread again, and I'm gonna put the green link in there. Let me see where it is. Thank you for that, Shinobi. I'm gonna go grab some questions that were written in our topics. Yeah, Slayer's got a question he wanted to ask. All right, what's Slayer got here? 
He's wondering if Paul Luther was inspired by William of Baskerville.